Welcome to the Faith Lift Radio Podcast, where doubt is destroyed and your faith is lifted. Here's today's message from Dr. Glenn. Welcome to the Faith Lift Radio Podcast. I am your host, Glenn O'Rakion, and as the late great R.W. Schambach said, you ain't got no problem. All you need is faith in God. I want to share with you part of a series of messages I recently shared with my partners and now making available to you publicly. I greatly believe if you will pay close attention to this teaching from the Word of God, it will transform your life, build your faith, and unleash the supernatural in you. Deuteronomy chapter 4, we're going to read verse 24 says, For the Lord our, thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. Another Bible says, For the Lord our God is a devouring fire, even a jealous God. Can you say amen? So do me a favor, lift up your hands and say with me, say, The Lord my God. Come on, everybody talk to me. Say, the Lord my God is a consuming fire. And you'll find the same thing echo in Hebrews in chapter 12 and verse 29. Hebrews in chapter 12 and verse 29 says, For, the last portion says, For our God. Everybody put your hand in your heart. Say with me, Our God. Now let's make it personal. Say, My God is what? A consuming fire. So we see that mentioned second time. Now let's see the third time it is mentioned. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy, the ninth chapter. And Moses is being told this by God, and he writes it for our uh, benefit. Deuteronomy chapter 9 and verse 3 says, Understand therefore this day that the Lord thy God is he which goeth over before thee as what? As a consuming fire. That's the third time we're told that God is a consuming fire. As a consuming fire, he shall destroy them. That means you're all your enemies, all the ites, the Hittites and the Hivites and uh, the Jebusites and the pesticides, uh, <laughs> all, all of them. Praise God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. All right, and he shall destroy them, and he shall bring them down before your face. So shall you drive them out and destroy them quickly. In other words, uh, that which has been stubborn against you, acting, and, and you, you, you have not been able to remove it, uh, but when God goes before you as a consuming fire, the stubborn will yield and bow before the fire of God. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. Now, when you read your Bible, you'll discover that God's people, they saw God as a fire. In fact, let's go to the book of Exodus chapter 24. Exodus chapter 24, please. And we are going to read verse 17. And Miss Prue, I'm, we want it in the King James Version. And then if you have the NIV, I would appreciate it. All right. Let's all read verse 17 together, please. Really want to go. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like what? Devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. So how did the children of Israel knew that God's presence was in a place or in the holy mount? Because the fire of God was there. Now, again, let's read verse 17. And let's read that again, please, King James, and then we're going to go to the NIV. Everybody read with me, please. Now, verse 17, and what? And the sight of the what? The glory of the Lord was like what? Devouring fire on the top of the mount. Now, everybody say with me, fire and glory. Fire. Say it again, fire and glory. Fire. All right, now, and I'm going to show you the connections of fire and glory in a minute. Now let's read, let's read from the NIV. It says, to the Israelites, the glory of the Lord looked like a what? Consuming fire on top of the mountain. So everybody repeat after me. Say fire and glory. glory. Alright. So you really sound like you've got some fire in that. Uh, glory. Come on, say with me. Fire and glory. Fire and glory. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, let's go to the book of Second Chronicles chapter 7. Second Chronicles chapter 7, please. And we're going to read verse uh, verse 1. 
verse 1, please. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 1 says, Now when Solomon had made an end of what? Praying that the fire, say about the fire, the fire came down from heaven. Amen. Notice when he prayed, fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices and the what? The glory of the Lord filled the house. So one more time, say with me, fire and glory. glory. Now, can you see the connection between fire, the fire of God and the glory of God? Let's go to verse 3, please. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 3, please. Look in your Bible. Everybody read now, please. And when all the children of Israel saw how the fire came down and what? The glory of the Lord upon the house. They bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement. Amen. And did what? And worshipped and praised the Lord saying for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Come on. Lift up your hands right now with me and say this with me. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Do you want a strong prayer life? Does your prayer life frustrate you? Do you want to know how to spend one hour with God but don't know how to pray for one hour? Well, I have the answers to your question. You need to get my book, Prayer Coach. Prayer Coach will lead you into a productive and powerful prayer life. Call 502-523-4407 or go to my website, glenorecchion.org. Call 502-523-4407 or go to glenorecchion.org. You need to get my book, uh, Prayer Coach. Say one more time, for the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. So you saw here how the fire came down and the glory upon the Lord of the Lord upon the house. So lift up your hand and say with me, I need the fire of God and the glory of God upon our house. Amen. What faith lift needs is the fire and the glory of God. What our pastors need today is the fire and the glory of God. What our praises need today is the fire and the glory of God. Can you say amen? What every member of this church in every family, in every, in every campus of faith lift right now, we need the fire and the glory of God. Can you say amen? Can you lift up your hands and say with me, I need the fire and I need the glory of God. Hallelujah. No fire, no glory. You hear me now? No fire, no glory. Can you say amen? Now, let's go to Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 5. All right, it says, For I, saith the Lord, will be unto her, that's the city, or the nation of Israel, Jerusalem, a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Again, circle the word fire and circle the word glory. Okay? So I will be a wall of fire round about her and will be the glory in the midst of her. When the fire of God is all around you, the glory will be in our midst. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God forever. Let's go to First Peter chapter 1. First Peter chapter 1, and we're going to read verse 7. First Peter chapter 1, and let's read verse 7 says, look what Peter says here, that the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with what? Fire might be found unto praise and honor and what? And glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Again, you see the connection between fire and glory, but this time it is in reference to your faith being tried. Are you hearing me, saints? Can you say amen? Amen. If you don't go through some, uh, through some story, you won't have no glory. Can you say amen? Amen. Jesus didn't say that in the world. Jesus did say that in the world you will have what? Tribulation. Praise God. But I want to tell you right now in every tribulation, amen, if you let your faith work, it's going to come out. Glory be to God. Yes, we went through the fire, but we're going to come out with the glory of God. Can you say amen? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, when you read your Bible, you'll discover that God's people knew him as a consuming fire. In Genesis chapter 15, Abraham saw God when he when God was cutting the covenant with him, 
and he cut all the animals in the middle, split in the middle, and the, the left side fell to the left, and the, the other one, the other side fell to the right, and in the middle was a pool of blood. It was a path of blood. Are you hearing me, saints? And Abraham saw God walking in that blood, doing a figure eight, and, God, and Abraham saw God as a smoke, a flaming smoke. Can I hear an amen, somebody? Abraham saw God as a fire. Can you say amen? Moses saw God on the backside of a desert. He saw a, a what? A plant that was on fire. Amen. But it was not being consumed. And the Bible says, and the angel of the Lord spoke to him out of the fire. In case you don't know what that is, that whenever you read the terms, uh, the angel of the Lord in the Old Testament, that is a terminology that is, that is reserved for the Lord Jesus Christ. And it is also known as the Christophany, which is an appearance of Christ in the Old Testament. And Moses saw the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, amen, as a fire that was not being consumed. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. And so then the angel spoke to him, the, God spoke to him from that burning bush. Can you say amen? So Abraham saw God as a fire, and then Moses saw God as a fire. In fact, if you read the book of Ezekiel, let's go to Ezekiel, please, chapter 8. Ezekiel in chapter 8. We're going to read verse 2, and Ezekiel is trying to describe for you God. Ezekiel chapter 8 and verse 2, Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire. Can you say amen? From the, from the appearance of his loins, even downward, fire, and from his loins, even upward, as the appearance of, fi- of brightness or fire, as the color of amber. Can you say amen? So what's Ezekiel saying? He's trying to describe God. He says, God is a fire from his loins up to his loins down. Can you say amen? Glory be to God. So your God is a consuming fire. So if God is a consuming fire, in fact, John the Revelator also saw Jesus, amen, describe him as he's got eyes like fire. In fact, I want to show you something here. You'll find this in the book of Revelation. I did not give this to you, Miss Prue. Revelation chapter, let's go to the book of the Apocalypse, but known as the Revelation, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can you say amen? All right, let's go to the book of Revelation chapter 1. We're going to read verse uh, verse 12, praise God, to verse uh, verse uh, 15. And then we're going to go to Revelation chapter 19, praise God. Revelation chapter 1, verse 12. Then I turn, that's John the Revelator, on the Isle of Patmos. He's seeing a revelation of Jesus. And how does he see Jesus? I turn around to see the voice that was speaking to me. And when I turned, I saw seven golden uh, lampstands. lampstands. All right, next verse. And among the lampstands was someone like a son of man. Let's go back to the King James, please. Uh, Miss Prue, hallelujah. Dressed in a robe, reaching down to his feet and with a golden sash. Amen. Around his chest. Woo. A golden sash. I need one of them. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Can we go back to the King James now, please? Verse 14. Glory to God. Look what it says here in verse 14. And verse 14, he says, <clears throat> His head, glory to God, and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were, were as a what? A flame of fire. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Can you say amen? So the Lord has been described as having eyes as flame, as fire. Let's go to Revelation chapter 19. And Jesus is coming back. Can you say amen? And he's going to be dealing with the Antichrist. Glory be to God forever. Can you say amen? <clears throat> oh, praise God. Revelation chapter 19. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise God. These lights are in my eyes. I can't even see my Bible properly. Thank you, Lord. Revelation chapter 19. Amen. 
And let's look at verse uh, 11, please. Revelation chapter 19 and verse 11 and verse 12. This is Jesus coming back. Come on now. I want everybody to read that verse with me, please. Ready? One, two, go. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he does judge and make war. Now look at verse 12, please. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Can you say amen? And on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Can you say amen? Hello, everyone. I am Glenn O'Reckon. I'm so glad that you are listening to my podcast. If you want to deepen your understanding of God's Word, all you've got to do is go to my website. There'll be many articles to bless you there. And you can also follow me on social media. You can connect with me on Facebook when I teach live on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday when I'm not traveling. So join me on Facebook. Join me on YouTube. But I'm so glad that you are listening to my podcast. When you go to my website, there will also be many books that are available to you that will change your life. All you're going to do is go to glenorechion.org. Now, if you need prayer, call 502-523-4407, and we are ready to pray for you. Amen. So when Jesus comes back to deal with the Antichrist, there's going to be a sword out of his mouth. We know he's going to have many crowns upon his head. He will have eyes like flame of fire. His robe will be dipped in blood. Glory be to God. Having tiles upon it says King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he'll be riding on a white horse. Can you say amen? But his eyes are like flaming fire. Can you say amen? Now, my point is, if God is a fire, why are you dead? Why do you come to church and you give God dead praise, dead worship? You give God a dead meditation. You go through the motion, but there's no life. Listen to me right now. I'm telling you right now, people are tired of going to a dead church. Are you hearing me? Saints, going to a dead church, listen to dead songs, listen to dead preacher, preaching a dead sermon to dead people. We need the fire of God. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, let's give you the, a quick recap and then and show you how to acquire the fire. Praise God. Now, remember this. The word fire in Hebrew is the word esh. E-S-H. Esh. And guess what, ladies and gentlemen? There's a lot of esh in the Bible. The Bi- Over 400 times the word fire is mentioned in the Bible. So God wants us to be on fire. I do not understand believers who got born again and filled with the Holy Ghost and then lose their fire. can understand that. I remember one time I walked into church as a teenager. um, I got saved, uh, properly saved. Amen. You know, you used to get saved all the time before you actually got properly saved. Amen. Amen. I got really saved at the age of 14 and got baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues when I was 14 years old. So one day I came into church. I was about 16, 17, maybe 17 years old, I guess. And I came into church. I was jumping up and down, ready for church service. I came in. Woo! Glory to God. And one of the pastors looked at me and said, I used to be like you. But now I have calmed down. I don't know where the boldness came from the inside of me. I said, brother, you didn't calm down. You are dried up. Are you listening? There's a big difference between calm down and dried up. But I was born again with the Holy Ghost and fire, baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Glory be to God. And the Bible tells you the fire must never leave the altar. I'm going to maintain the fire of God in my life. Can you say amen? And I don't plan, I don't plan to calm, to calm down. I plan to get louder and louder for Jesus. Can you say amen? May you be on fire all the days of your life. Can you say amen? All right. So let's quickly give you a recap. And then I'm going to give you seven things today. So I'm going to give you a seven recap of last week. And then I'm going to give you seven things that you need to have to acquire the fire of God. Are you listening to me now? All right. Number one, we discovered last week. So here's a recap. The fire of God is a revelation or an expression of the deity of God. The fire of God is a revelation or 
an expression of the deity of God. Praise God. Number two, we discovered that fire is an indication of God's acceptance or God's approval of a sacrificial offering. The, the way that you understood that God accepted your offering, your sacrifice, and approved of your sacrifice like he did with Noah, like he did with Manoah. All right? Who's Manoah? Manoah is Samson's father. The way that they knew that their offerings, the sacrifice was accepted was the fire of God will consume it on the altar of God. Can you say amen? <clears throat> so now today we don't have to offer a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice or an animal sacrifice, but you do have to bring a sacrifice of praise, the sacrifice of our lips. Can you say amen? And so how do you know that your sacrifice has been accepted when the fire of God fall upon your worship and your praise? But many times we just stand there gormless. We just stand there and no, we don't even raise our hands. We don't clap our hands. We don't come in with the garments of praise. Come on now. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. And you're waiting for the praise band to pump you up. I don't need no band to pump me up. I don't care if Paul is in, is in the spirit or not. I didn't come here to listen to Paul. I didn't come here to listen to Rosie. I didn't come here to listen to Karen. I came to give God praise. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And why am I giving God praise? Because, number one, my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. I'm saved. I'm indwelt by the Holy Ghost. Can you say amen? Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. We've got, we've got a reason to give God praise. Number one, because you're saved and you're born again. How many, how many of you here you're glad to be born again? Oh, I'm glad I'm born again. Thank you, Lord. Sometimes I'm walking. You know, I go for a walk nearly every day. I said nearly every day. Not every day. <laughs> nearly every day. All right. And you're walking down the street. I'm walking. Even like this morning, I was walking down the street uh, thinking to myself, what, where would I be if I was not saved? Where would you be if you were not saved? Some of you right now would be on drugs. Somebody would be six feet under the ground. Are you hearing me, saints? But aren't you glad today that you're born again, that you're saved, that you're washed in the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that your name is written in the last book of life. Woo, it's good to be saved. Can you say amen? Thank you, Lord. So fire is an indication of God's acceptance and approval of a sacrificial offering. Number three. Fire is symbolic of divine presence and divine protection. You just read in the book of Zechariah, I'll be a wall of fire around Jerusalem and the glory in her midst. Do you not remember when they came to assassinate the prophet of God, Elisha? And his servant went out there in the morning to get water, to fetch water. To make some coffee for the man of God, because man of God needs coffee. Thank you, Lord Jesus. This man of God needs coffee tea in the morning. What's coffee? Tea? That's a combination of coffee and tea. Need my coffee and tea in the morning. My brother learned that this way. He said, What do you want for breakfast? Coffee tea. What the heck is coffee? Tea? Coffee and tea. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you say amen? What? Of course. I always get what I want. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. <laughs> no, it's not combined. It's two separate cups. It's two separate cups. Thank you, Lord. All right. And what happened? They wanted to come and assassinate the man of God. So they sent out all the Rambos, all the commandos to go and kill. Right? And uh, when the servant saw that they were surrounded, he went back in the house and said, Alas, master, we're going to die. <laughs> and what did the prophet of God said? Those who are for us are more than those who are against us. The secret to the supernatural is fasting. Fasting will fast forward your destiny and take you to realms that you have never been before. I want to recommend my book to you, 101 Benefits of Fasting. That book will give you the mechanics and dynamics of fasting. Call 502-523-4407 or go to my website, glenorecchion.org. Call 502-523-4407 and get the 101 benefits of fasting. 
and the servant of God said, I don't know what he's smoking. <laughs> I can see 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, 50,000 are against us. But who are for us, me and you? That's it. And Elijah, uh, the prophet of God said, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And when his eyes were opened, he saw what? That, the, 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 that there was a wall of fire around the prophet of God. Can you say amen? So, number three, fire is symbolic of divine presence and divine protection. Number four, fire is the leading and the guidance of the spirit. They were led by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Can you say amen? Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Number four, fire, uh, fire is the leading in the guidance of the Holy Ghost. Number five, fire is judgment upon the enemies of God's people. Elijah said, if I be a man of God, let fire come down and consume. And fire came down and consumed the 50 uh, Rambos that were sent by the king to fetch the prophet of God. So fire is judgment upon the enemies of God's people. And you remember that God looked at them through the pillar of fire at night. And the scripture says God disturbed the Egyptians. Amen. And God took off their wheels. The Hebrew said in Hebrew, God made their wheels square. Can you say amen? That's what you call a rough ride. Amen. Those who are trying to give you a rough ride, God will give them a rough ride. Can you say amen? That's why you need the fire of God. Now, I love number six. I think number six is my favorite one. Fire will expose the snake hiding in our midst. Can you say amen? Fire will do what? Hiding the snake in our midst. Do you understand that there are some snakes in church? Amen. Come on now. There are some Jezebel hiding in church. Don't tell me you don't know there's, there's snakes in church. Yeah, there are some There are some devils in church. Don't you remember one time Jesus walked into the synagogue and there was a man with a withered hand. Amen. All the time he was hiding in the synagogue. But when Jesus walked in that day, glory to God, that snake, amen, could not stay uh, comfortable in the presence of Jesus. The, and the Bible says that uh, Paul was making a fire. Come on. Say, say with me, I got to make a fire. Amen. The reason why the snake is hiding in your midst and biting you in secret because you don't, you don't know how to make a fire. You don't turn up the heat. You got to turn up the heat of your praise. Turn up the heat of your worship. Turn up your heat of your meditation of God's word. Hallelujah. Go to your prayer meeting and then you'll find out all the snake in your midst will begin to expose themselves. And when it exposes itself, what did Paul do? Shook that snake back in the fire. Can you say? Amen. Glory to God. So number six, fire will expose the snake hiding in our midst. Number seven, fire is a fresh Pentecostal move of the Holy Ghost that we all need. It's not just one Pentecost. You can have Pentecost every week. Can you say amen? I have Pentecost every day. Why? Because I pray in tongues every day. Glory to God. Can you say amen? Every day I experience a rushing mighty wind. Every day I experience tongues of, uh, cloven tongues of fire upon my head. Can you say amen? Now, let's go to the book of Leviticus. This other seven thing that we, we, we talked about last week. And here, let's pick up on today's message. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 6. We're going to read verse 12 to verse 13. Okay. I want you please to look at that now. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it. It shall not be put out. The fire upon the altar of your heart must never be put out. And the priest shall do what? Burn wood on it every morning. Everybody say every morning. And lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and it shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. In fact, let me let me read that verse. Uh, can you read verse 13, please? Verse 13, the next verse says, 
Everybody read now, please. Come on, lift up your hands and read this out loud. Come on, Jacksonville. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Come on, read it one more time louder, please. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. Point your finger at your neighbor and tell him, your fire must never go out. Your fire must never go out. Come on, look at your other neighbor and tell him, your fire must must never go out. Can you say amen? Let me read that to you from the ESV. It says, uh, <clears throat> the ESV says, the fire on the altar shall be kept burning on it. It shall not go out. The priest, everybody say the priest, the priest shall burn wood on it every morning and he shall arrange the burnt offering on it and he shall burn on it the fat of the peace offerings fire shall be kept burning can you say amen ladies and gentlemen thanks for listening to this episode of the faith lift radio podcast for more information about dr glenn and how to offer your financial support log on to glenarecchia.org. 